and with a light. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd just like to make a few comments to, to close off the debate, and I apologise if my contribution sounds like a second reading speech, because unfortunately I wasn't able to participate in the second reading speech, so I'm actually going to make some comments now. First, I'd just like to uh, commend all those being involved in this debate, both inside the chamber and outside, who, in my view, have, uh, have behaved in a way which is uh, certainly a credit to, to our state, in the sense that we can actually uh, deal with very complex and uh, controversial issues in a way which does not diminish, dimin, diminish, diminish us. I uh, also like to thank all, of, all the people who have taken the opportunity to express their views uh, to myself, whether they support the proposed legislation or not. Uh, at the outset, I acknowledge that whichever way I vote on this bill, like all of us, uh, we're going to disappoint some in our community. That's just a reality. Equally, I respect the different and at times opposing views expressed in this chamber and in my community, irrespective of their moral or ethical basis, uh, or have a valid place in our democracy. Mr Speaker, our democracy is diminished when we try to lock out people from engaging in the public sphere. In my view, even minority views deserve to be heard in this place. As I understand the issues, Mr, Mr. Speaker, uh, those supporting the bill believe consenting individuals of sound mind and who have an, an unbearable pain as a result of a terminal or physical illness should have the choice of ending their, their pain by ending their own life. In short, autonomous people should have the right to control their own lives. Supporters of the bill argue that it fulfils uh, the, the principles that for a small number of people, traditional medicine cannot relieve their pain and suffering. They also genuinely believe that the safeguards will be put in place to ensure that vulnerable people are not subject to abuse or the, uh, subject to abuse or the proposed laws are not misused. Proponents also further argue that existing legal framework does not provide health practitioners with sufficient scope or protection to provide patients with a, with a terminal illness the appropriate care. Additionally, they assert that the current laws are discriminatory and lead to un unintended effects where people take their own lives rather than uh, prolonging the su suffering. Proponents, with some justification, also rely on the results of opinion polls that indicate majority support for some form of voluntary euthanasia laws. Those who do not support voluntary euthanasia do so for a range of reasons and from various moral and ethical positions or bases. I'll briefly summarise them as I understand them. For some, their religious beliefs lead them to hold that view. Those in the healthcare industry, whether health practitioners or nurses, etc., or any health worker, are uh, also, um, like the general community, divided about this, these laws. Those who work in healthcare are concerned that voluntary euthanasia could undermine the doctor-patient relationship. Of the greatest concern I've heard, both in the community and at this place, is that once we have crossed the Rubicon, there will be no pressure, there will be more pressure to expand the availability of euthanasia to a greater range of people in the community. I think that's the comment which the member West Torrens made. This debate, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, has already started in Victoria. Uh, the committee which I belong to with others, uh, End of Life uh, Choices, uh, who took evidence from, from Victorian practitioners, and that debate about changing their laws has already started. This concern is usually referred to as a slippery slope argument. Many in the community believe that no safeguards can be devised to protect vulnerable people from abuse or misuse of the proposed law. Palliative care workers believe that by improving the quality of and access to palliative care, there will be no need for voluntary euthanasia. Mr Speaker, perhaps my greatest concern about these laws and other proposed laws can be best summarised by some of the research. And the piece I'm about to read from the New Zealand Medical Journal is just indicative of the bits of uh, research I've read. The, the authors of this research conclude as follows. Our study provides confirmation that the fear of being a burden on others is not only felt by those facing the imminent mortality, but also those older individuals who are currently healthy and living independently in the community. We also conclude that for some older people, their prior experiences with healthcare and dying may be a strong factor in influencing and supporting medical practices that hasten death at the end of life. 
We believe it's critical to understand the reasons why people support medical practices that hasten death well in advance of such practices becoming legally available. Mr Speaker, I would submit that I'm not sure we have we reached that position yet, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. As a, Dr Brian Pollard, a retired anaesthetist who was a pioneer of palliative care medicine, palliative care medicine in Australia, said that uh, his intimate experience of treating many dying patients and their families, and he concludes that many of these, however, don't relate specifically to the patient's illness, but to their isolation and neglect or lack of love and support, factors of which families and the community are primarily responsible for. While public opinion is a very important consideration in formulating public policy, some care must be used when trying to extrapolate results from a general question to a specific public policy position. If public policy is going to be driven by opinion polls, then we must, as legislators, be prepared for the many unintended consequences. Opponents of voluntary euthanasia rely heavily on the slippery slope argument, which I mentioned. I actually do not, do not share that view, because in my opinion, once you've legalised voluntary euthanasia, it is a natural progression to broaden its application. As I said, this discussion has taken place already elsewhere. There's nothing slippery about it. It is a natural progression to broaden its application as we best, better understand it. That is the experience in other jurisdictions and there is no sound reason to limit its scope to a broader range of people who are suffering. Mr Speaker, sadly, this debate has been, has been framed in some as supporters of the bill uh, have compassion and those who, who are against the bill uh, want to see people suffer. In my, in my view, both supporters and opponents of the bill want to address the suffering of people with a terminal illness. We've just, we just have different views on how that suffering should be treated or managed. Mr Speaker, I do acknowledge that this bill, which has now been amended is a, is, in this chamber, is a better bill than it came to us. I hope that the bill works in the way it was intended.